one more time. Oh, God. Change our hearts, Lord. Make our hearts like your hearts. Oh, Lord, our Father. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. We are here, Lord, to worship you, me. to declare Come to you that, yes, Lord, aspects, Lord, without you we are nothing. Thank you, Jesus. And, Father, we are here to acknowledge how we need you, O oh God. Come and inhabit the praises of your people oh God. and speedily answer the prayers that they are offering, O oh Lord, our God. We give you thanks. We give you honor. You are worthy of our praise, O oh God. Thank you, King Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Yeah. the first one. Let's sing together. 
busted. Where sin runs deep, where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. Because where you are, where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in together.
carried on your wings, loving so
Yes, our souls long to worship you. You are worthy of our praise. Receive our praises, O God. You are our shield. Yes, you are our sun. Sun of righteousness, shine upon us and bring a new life. Bring lives on you, O God. As we lay our bodies to you, as we lay our souls to you, our spirit in total surrender to you, O God. We love you, O God. We worship you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, O Lord. We give you honor. We exalt your holy name, O God. You are the great I am, O King of God, Lord. Thank you for this time, O Lord, that you are gathering us together, Lord, as the family of JFM, O Lord, as part of the commonwealth of Israel, as a part of King of God with the body of Christ. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that you have been on our side, O King of God, Lord, in 2020, O Lord, that you have brought us forth, O God, to 2021, O God. And Lord, we are going to declare in your presence, O Lord, Psalms 124. Uh, and uh, Psalms 124, maybe just uh, repeat after me, those who are not having the Bibles. If there had not been for the Lord, who was on my side, let now GFM say, when the floods came, when the locusts came, when the lakes overflowed their boundaries, when the coronavirus came, if it has not been for the Lord, who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then would have, they, they would have swallowed us up alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The streams would have gone over our souls. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our souls. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth, as prey to coronavirus, as prey to the locusts, as prey to the floods, as prey to the landslide, as prey to Lake Victoria when it overflowed our boundaries. Our souls, our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. We have escaped. Our help is the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth the demons that did not make the heaven and earth will not have dominion over us in this year. The coronavirus, which did not make the heaven and the earth, will not have dominion over us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. You have been our help. You have brought us this day. We rejoice in your God. In you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen, 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 Amen. I welcome all of you to this first service at JFM, year 2021. Welcome, your neighbors, Hallelujah. Welcome to 2021. Jesus is alive. Jesus is well. Lord Jesus Christ, come and take over. We invite your presence, Lord, in Jesus' name. Uh, my name is uh, Bagonza Samuel. I serve here as the leader of the Elders and Deacons Council, and I'm charged a deacon of the family. I thank God for the privilege of being leading the service today and the first service of the year. We thank God who has kept us. 2021 was not, 2020 was not an easy year. But here we are. We have sailed through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has not allowed the prey to eat us. 
Even where we have suffered losses, God is still on our side. Praise the Lord. I'm married to one wife all the time, Dora Bagonza, and I believe soon we shall all be coming back as the Lord fights our way and, subs, uh, and uh, subjugates the impact of the coronavirus. So I want to welcome any first-time visitor. If you are attending or ask for the first time, please raise your hand. This year, I mean, and this year, <laughs> you are coming here for the, this is the first time to come. I think all of us, <laughs> praise the Lord. To our audience on Facebook, yes. our audience on Zoom, yes. the Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. You are partaking of the blessings and the presence of God that is present here. I pray that you'll follow the proceedings. You'll not allow to be disrupted yes. and interrupted. Running to the kitchen or there and there. Be focused, sit in one place and be ministered to. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So I'm going to invite for one or two testimonies. Indeed, God has done many things. 2020 started well, but evangel was subjugated. But we thank God, as we have declared. We have escaped. Hallelujah. We have escaped the snare of COVID. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Any testimonies? Any testimony? Hallelujah. I mean, I have one. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whenever I come in his presence, I have a testimony. He has done us well. What a privilege to be in his presence, to praise him, to worship for him. Your bones are not broken. You are not sick. You are not in the hospital. What a privilege and honor to be in his presence. He loves us so much. He has provided. He's such a good God. He's a faithful God. Whenever I see people here praising, I long to be in his presence. Eh? But anyway, even home can, be good, can, can also inhabit his presence. I bless the Lord so much for such a time like this to be in his presence. I thank him for his provision. I thank him for our pastors. Pastor, past, you are what can i call you pastor godson you are a, a strong man my dear this season has been a very hard season pastor bugembe you are a strong man may god bless you israel the people who are around here before you know it you see a message there is service there is this i'm like amen you are strong men may the good lord bless you i thank god for the pastor's wives my God, you are strong, ladies. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. You, know, you are very strong. May God bless you. It is such a privilege to have you people and to be in the presence of the Lord. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. Good morning, church. It is nice to be here this morning. Amen. As uh, Elder Sam was calling people to testify, something told me, Sharon, it will be embarrassing for you not to thank God. <laughs> oh, sorry. But I want to thank God so much for business. Uh, most of you know we do business, but as the year began 2020, unfortunately we lost our landlord. And when we lost our landlord, something, okay, not something, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you need to start planning to move from this place. And moving from business, the kind of business we do, moving it includes moving umeme, moving machines, moving timber. And it was quite not easy to take because even at that pace, the Lord had broken through our business and it was bringing forth what we didn't expect. 
so there was worry how is the new place going to be where are we going to go but i want to thank god that along the months covid came in it, get, it got more confusing how do you go about that you need money but as i speak today i want to bless the lord because god was preparing us somehow we walked on the same street we got a place not as expensive as we would have thought we have Amen. moved the business yes it has taken money it has taken the grace of god Amen. you people i was so worried but i said god i cannot do everything we have tried with my husband we have moved the business and coincidentally my husband lost a job that time but little did we know that we needed him to manage this movement and the lord has established us and we want to thank him that the business is up and running we want Amen. to thank the lord so much god bless you all things work out for good for them that love god and are called according to his purposes uh, equally for me, this 2020 was a very tough year. It opened out, we had prepared very well in business terms, brought a lot of stock. 80% of our products are consumed by boarding school students. So I had prepared for first term and second term. Behold, coronavirus comes, close, um, schools are closed, we are caught up with stock. <laughs> But I thank God in all those tough times, God has provided for us, yes. has kept us healthy. We are caught with the, about 400 cartons of that product. But as I speak now, we have about uh, 1,200. Ah. And somehow, somehow, <laughs> things are been going slowly. So I thank God that he is gracious. He is gracious. Even when the enemies think that has caught us off guard, God aligns things and keeps us whole and well. I think uh, last testimony. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, I'm sorry for coming late to testify. I was seated there and um, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Uh, last year, I thank God that last year was not terrible for me. I thank him that he provided I thank him that um, my family and I are well, and so are all of you. Thank you for coming. I thank God that I started school. Um, I'm doing something I love very much, and I thank him for that opportunity. I thank him for using me for his glory, worship, and I also thank him a lot for the job opportunities that he provided last year. Last year when COVID came in, I thought probably I'll be sitting home, maybe just thinking about life. <laughs> but I thank God that um, he spoke to Dr. Kathy and um, I've been helping her out with her son. And I thank God that all is well. I enjoy my time with him. And yes, I thank God that he has taught me a lot. For example, I've become I've learned to become patient, more and more patient. <laughs> yes, I Amen. thank him that um, <laughs> I thank him that the girls went to school, they are back and they are well. I thank him that no one is sick and we are all well and alive. I thank him for all of you that are here and those that are at home watching us from here. I thank him for his goodness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a special announcement to make. I'll invite Pastor Bugembe here. Pastor Bugembe. Praise the Lord. Do you appreciate this man? Yeah. <laughs> Do you recognize the mighty work he's done in our midst? Yes. Always very, very important to acknowledge and appreciate good service. Praise the Lord. Pastor Bugembe, we appreciate you. We love you. And we acknowledge you up contribution this ministry almost five years you have served us tirelessly we really love you and appreciate you so during the covid session god started speaking to our brother pastor Bugembe, and it was clear that he would desire to move on so he's serving he gave us a notice of about six months as leadership and we are praying it through but now time has come to make it public. 
he'll be serving uh, with us until the end of Feb. So I believe as a church, as a congregation who has benefited from his ministry and the wife's ministry, it's important that we prepare to send him forth with blessing. Amen. We cannot allow this man to go empty-handed. We need to pray over him. We need to bless him. So even when there's COVID, let's begin preparing. Amen. Amen. So we, we appreciate you, Musumba. And to our audience on uh, Zoom and uh, Facebook, our dear Pastor Godson will be stepping down. But the church, the JFM, is his family, is open for him. He can enter me, Pastor Anthony, sorry. Anytime you can come, you are welcome as a family. Praise the Lord. This is your home. This is your baby. You have been part and parcel of birthing this baby. Praise the Lord. So your part of this ministry is open to you anytime, and we appreciate your contribution. So let's prepare. Come end of Feb, we give him a very good, fantastic send of blessing. Amen? Amen? So that's the announcement. So some of you could have been hearing it from here and here. Now we have made it public. Whatever is made public is not hidden. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Musumba, we, we appreciate you. Mama, Joan, we appreciate you. You see, even with that announcement, they have continued to serve faithfully. Praise the Lord. That's the heart of a servant leader. Praise the Lord. And therefore, let me invite our very own Pastor Godson to come and give us the word. I believe our hearts are receptive, our minds are alert. And to our team on Facebook and Zoom, please do not allow to be distracted. Listen in, praise the Lord. Listen in. Hallelujah. Yeah, Musumba, Godson, come and preach the word. Somebody say praise the Lord. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, always deserves our worship and deserves our thanksgiving. Thanks so much, Elder Sam, for leading us in the service. We are always so, so humbled by your presence and your leadership anointing upon you. And again, we want to appreciate the choir. Thank you so very, very much for today's worship, uh, Maurice and team and uh, and Hebziba, we thank you. We do appreciate you. Uh, one of the hardest things for uh, any minister or service is seeing one of you, you know, leaving you when you have been, you know, standing with one another. And as you can imagine, in every place of leadership or organization, uh, each one comes with a set of skills. Some Sumatran had something I didn't have, I must admit. And so I had what he didn't have. We, we used to complement one another. But now that God is calling him to move on, uh, we trust God that he will help us in everything. Somebody say amen. amen. And want to make sure that we minister, we release people with a blessing. Uh, that's a calling God has placed upon us uh, to release people, train them, and uh, make them a blessing wherever they would go. Let us pray as we pull out our Bibles. By the way, did you come with the Bible? Let me see your Bible right up. Uh, swing it up. Some of you come with the Bibles, you keep it safely under your care, and before you know it, you have gone without opening it. Any person like that problem? <laughs> and your notebook? Let me see your notebooks up again. Ariel, Ariel, what is your notebook? Oh, she's laughing at me. Okay. All right, we praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our God and King, we do thank you this morning. We do acknowledge that you are God. You change not. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And even as we gather this morning, Heavenly Father, with lots of testimonies of your amazing miracles, yet although our brother is moving on, Pastor Anthony and his wife, Lord, we commend them to you, O oh Lord our God. We know that, Father, you are at work in these end times for the divine purpose of the kingdom of God. We pray that, God, your will will be done and your kingdom will come. Father, strengthen us. I pray that God, as we hear your word, we will be renewed and strengthened. We will be encouraged in the name of the Lord. And yet, we will take caution and warning by the word of God. 
anoint your word, Heavenly Father. For pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. What a great day and a great time to appear before the Lord. And we come not with the morning, we come with thanksgiving. Thanking God for the way God has preserved you and preserved me in this time of the year. Many of us will acknowledge that 2020 was an interesting year. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine the other day and told me, we need to go back to Bible school. You know, I'm a Bible school student, so can you hear my words? It's like I'm eating my words. Uh, since I'm far away, you can trust that all will be well. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he's, the, he's a pastor like me. And then he's like, but pastor, when we were in Bible school, nobody taught us about pastor churches during COVID. And so he said that course unit needs to be added to the, you know, the course unit of Bible. <laughs> that course unit wasn't part of the Bible training. But yet, <laughs> in it all, oh God has been gracious. You and I know the impact we have battled with in the last year, 2020. And the, in the realm of the Spirit, it's as if like we are beginning a new journey as 2021 begins. You know, I don't know how to put it, but let me say it the other way by saying that uh, we are beginning like a journey which is going to usher in the coming back of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, I am aware that governments are working very hard to make a cashless society globally. And actually, they have actually set debts secretly. And what will happen is that if you don't have uh, an ATM card or anything else, you cannot trade. Now, that will have many implications, as you can imagine. And all these things will only prepare us for one world government, for the Antichrist. I'm not saying this that you should be scared. I'm saying that you should be prepared. Somebody said prepared. We need to be prepared. Before we came for service, how many of us came to service unprepared? All of us came prepared. You took a shower, chose your clothes, polished your shoes, combed your hair. I combed mine. I did a good job, not so. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it was all preparation. And then when we came in here, uh, Pastor Anton and the choir were getting ready to make sure they do the sound right. Uh, my brother Stephen was there, you know, make sure the sound is perfect, preparation. By the time you came, we're already there for you. Now, God wants the church to be prepared for the second coming back of Jesus Christ. All these things you are seeing now are signs, are sirens, like the present moving, and they think, ding, ding, ding. I mean, he's coming, make a way, make a way. Jesus is coming back really soon. It's no longer day as usual as it used to be. And so, we're in that time when the year closes in, with the Middle East, around the, the Middle East issues are still pending. The Israeli crisis. I mean, the issues in the Middle East. And nobody will ever solve those problems except the pretender called the Antichrist. And so I pray that you and I will be really, really prepared. So in the past nine months of COVID, it has been a challenging time. A year to remember. Schools closed. We imagined ever that schools will be closed up this point in time. Who ever imagined that? Business is closed. Travels, you know, uh, you know, everything. Nothing is unaffected. You know, all the things happened in the course of last year. The most painful was about when they said uh, only those organizations that offer non, uh, don't offer essential services would remain operational. That means when the church was non-essential. Can you begin to imagine? <laughs> I mean, may the Lord help us that we rise up. I picked two comments I read from the internet about uh, this season. Somebody said, uh, it was called David. He said, I spent six days on a ventilator with COVID-19. It saved me, but my life is not and will never be the same again. He was testifying. I mean, the trauma, the instant seen there. We had a friend of ours 
who uh, got COVID and was in this high end hospital in our city, Kampala, was in there for four days. And this bill was 20 million. Did you, did you hear that? So, Busini Mani, not so. All this because of COVID. Now, the world all around, all over, have experienced this year passing in many different, different ways. But in it all, our God has been faithful. He has fed us. He has closed us. He has protected us. He has guarded us. He has given us wisdom. He has been there in the thick and the thin. Where nobody is, our God has been with us. In our families, in our marriages, in our businesses, God has been gracious. Come on, give God a round of applause. We stand as witnesses of God's goodness. We stand as those who bear the testimony that God is faithful exactly as he said in his holy word. God has been faithful. And therefore, as we start Gregorian year 2021, we call, it, we call that name Gregorian because the man who changed the times of God was called Gregory, was a pope in Rome. So it became to be the calendar called Gregorian or Gregory, which we now can, we can, we can call a civic calendar, which we follow as it were. Uh, 2021 has begun. But we all know in the realm of the spirit, Bible calendar, it is five, seven, eight, one year. Still ongoing and up the next probably two months, about, about two months, yes, two months of other. We'll get in there. But this is my, 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 my desire and craving for each one of us this year, that we walk by faith. The just shall walk by faith, not by sight, not by emotions, not by feelings, but we walk by faith, putting all our trust and confidence in no other name but Jehovah God, the King of Kings. And that God will never disappoint us. The time has come. Don't walk by feelings. And by the way, as I already mentioned, the things may not get any easier. May not. Mark my words. May not. But the just have been called to walk by faith. Not by sight, but by faith in God. Not faith in faith, but faith in God. The sovereign God, the King of Kings. I, I found a scripture in the book of Genesis 5.24. It talks about Enoch. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. <laughs> and was no more. God took him. God is calling upon us to be like Enoch in our day to walk with God in the morning, in the mid-time, at lunchtime, in the afternoon, in the evening, in our thoughts, in every business we do, work and everything. Let us walk closely with our God. And by that, we'll prove our faith and our confidence in God. So ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk to you about a subject which God began to speak to me in the course of last week. Present your case. Present your case in this year as the year begins. And the rest of the year, learn to present your cases before the Lord. In other words, learn to pray aright. Whereby your prayer will be fruitful and bear fruit. And God will answer your prayer. Many of us have got unanswered prayer because maybe something's wrong somewhere. The case wasn't presented right. Let us present our cases again. As we cross into the, the Gregorian calendar 2021, there are issues that were under, where, which were left pending last year, true or false. Let us present those cases before God. It could be about our families, all our marriages, all our children, all the things we desire to do and to have. Let us present our case at this time of the full moon of Tibet and as we begin a new year we need to learn to present our case before God we could have gone through so much last year so much pains maybe there were losses maybe discomforts maybe there were accusations over you somebody accused you maybe there were discomforts 
maybe other issues whatsoever. Let us learn to present our case before our God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let me remind us the Lord our God is a righteous judge. As we bring our petitions aright, the Lord will re respond to our prayer. Prophet Isaiah said in 41 and verse 21, Present your case, says the Lord. Set forth your argument, says Jacob's king. Present your case. What is your case? What is your issue? What is your challenge? What is your concern? What is, you, what is eating you up within you? Bring it to God. And the Lord Almighty will surely respond. Thank God we have got land friends in the house. Hallelujah. As I talk about present your case, I'm sure they're like, uh -huh, tell us more. Yes, I'm going to, to, to download it. <laughs> you see, in the physical, physical case or court, cases are presented before a qualified judge of a given recognized court who listens to all the evidence and arguments from either parties, the accuser and then being accused, and finally makes a reasonable verdict based on the legal laws of the land. Is that so, Sharon? I'm, I'm still on going, eh? You know, and that's how it is. I mean, the judge will sit and listen to who is accusing and then being accused. Listen to all their petitions. And then, you know, he listens, of course, with the counsel of other people around him, and then a case is decided. And the judge passes the verdict. So interesting, brethren, that in the legal world, that's how it works. But let me remind you that the Bible you're holding today is the legal document. Hmm. Yes, it is. Let me prove my case. Number one, the Bible refers to God as a righteous judge. Psalms 75 and verse 7. Isaiah 33 verse 22. Second Timothy 4, 8. Talks about God being a righteous judge. I don't have time to read the verses. Please write the verses down. You've got the reading thereafter. Number two, the Bible refers to the term witnesses or credible witnesses. They must be witnesses. Acts 1 8 talks about Jesus telling the disciples, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, you know, Samaria, and the uttermost ends of the earth. What are they witnessing about? the resurrection of Jesus Christ that wasn't fake, it was real. They were witnesses. So the Bible talks about witnesses, not only there, but also Revelation 1.5 talks about the faithful witness. 2 Corinthians 13 and 1 talks about witnesses. Matthew 18 and 16 by a true mother shall be established. Witnesses. The Bible is a legal document. It's a legal book. Number three, it talks about presenting a matter before God. Isaiah 41, where we read, it talks about present your case before the Lord. Isaiah 43, 26 says, state your case. What is your case? What is your concern? What is your matter? Number four, it talks about the chooser. And who is the chooser? The devil. Who daily chooses you and me before God? And what is the best of accusation? The base of that question is about the sins we have committed and we haven't repented. He chooses us and reminds God. Remember Andrew the other day, he, he, he sinned, he didn't repent. The other day he stole a people, somebody's rubber, he didn't repent. Remember the other day, he, I mean, he presents cases against God where there is no repentance. Let me say this. Once our sins have been repented of, and wash the blood of Jesus, they are dissolved once and for all. And that means the devil has no case to bring before us unto the Almighty God. So the best to deal with the devil is to live a repentant lifestyle where we wash ourselves every single day by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. I was telling a friend of mine the other day, I think you agree with me, that this year we have washed our hands more than any other in our lives, two of us. Man, we have washed hands. And we are still washing hands. I mean, that means that the coronavirus germ 
has no room because you have washed your hands. You, you are pure, so to say. So it has no basis. And then, actually, the more you clean yourself, the more you push it away or you reduce the chances of affecting you. Anyway, we have washed the hands, but the devil is a chooser of the brethren. Zechariah 3 1 says, Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him, accusing Joshua. He was accusing Joshua, you know, no, 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 he, he, he. He's a chooser of the brethren. Revelation 12 and verse 10 says this The accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. Somebody say, Hallelujah. John is seeing the devil, the accuser of the brethren, being thrown down. He who accuses them before our God day and night. Can you imagine the devil never gets there to accuse us before God? You remember Job talking about, you know, in the book of Job, the devil roaming and God is asking, so where have you been? I've been up and about on the earth, non-stop, rest, restless, looking for cases against you and me to trust before God. So that's his job and his work. But also talks about a verdict, a legal decision. Second Kings 21, 12, 20, 15 says, this is my judgment. This is God speaking now. God is verdict. God is judgment. John 16, 18 says, when he comes, will convict the world, condemning con concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. The Bible talks about verdict, about a legal decision. Number five, four, rather six. It talks about evidence. This is your Bible. It talks about evidence, proof. Exodus 23, one says, you shall not spread a false report. You shall not join your hands with a wicked man. To be a malicious witness. Let me say this. Those who stand in courts of law as false witnesses, they stand in a place of judgment of God. Unless they repent. When you follow statute someone else, you commit a crime before the Almighty God. Exodus 20, 16 says, You shall not bear false witness evidence against your neighbor. It's in your Bible. The Bible is a legal book. Then it talks about being weighed on court judge scales and you have, you found wanting. Now, I love the scripture of uh, King Belshazzar in Daniel chapter 5, 27. You know, the handwriting is written on. You know, of course, they had gone to a high level of arrogancy. Uh, you know, he demands that the vessels of that serves in the holy temple of God are brought to his palace they sit back with all his concubines and have a good time. And so they use the vessels, like we use for Holy Communion, and take them to a bar. Ha! Then the hand was seen written, you know, writing, Mene, Mene, Teshkel. <laughs> you have been weighed and... <laughs> and the Bible said that night, he didn't make it. You know, many play with God, yeah? But don't play with God. We're going to walk by faith. And it talks about pleading guilty. Proverbs 11.25 The wicked guilty will not go unpunished. The wicked guilty will not go unpunished. They may escape the man's law, but they will meet God's law someday, sometime. They may be smart, sneak out, and find their way, bribe and all that, but the day is coming. When the wrath of God deal with you. And number nine, it talks about God is law. The Bible you're holding in your holy hands this morning is the law of God. And God will judge men and women based on this law someday to come. And therefore, the more we work around this law for our good, the better for us. And God is law is holy. The commandments of God are righteous. Isaiah 24 and verse 5. James 4.12 says there is not only one lawgiver and a judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. You know, and goes on and the rest of it. And the last bit of one says this. Jesus, in all this, is our greatest advocate. <laughs> he is our advocate. He is our lawyer. He stands on our behalf. He starts to defend you and defend me. He said, don't touch that one. I know him, he bears my blood. I know that one, he has my name. I know that one, his name is in the book of life. Devil, you have no case. Jesus is our advocate. And trust me, he has never lost any case. 
neither we lose any in the days to come. He won't lose any. He is our advocate. The Bible says in 1 John 2 and 1, My little children, I'm writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate. We, the Father, and any mention is who he is, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Ah! Hallelujah. He is our advocate. When the devil comes against you, are choosing this and the other, Jesus, our advocate, stands up and says, no, 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 that and I know. He is my child. He is blood washed. He has repented of his sins. He has done all to do, make sure he works righteously. The problem is, when we are in, re in, in, in rebellion against God, Jesus, our advocate, has nothing to say. Actually, it is us who prevents the cases to be won. We are the problem. Let's work out our lives to ensure that we are in right standing with God to win the cases against us by the devil. I was so honored this last week on Tuesday, the 29th of against God tremendously. We've been into witchcraft, we've been into idolatry, we've been into incense, we have shed innocent blood. I mean, we've done everything even wicked. And for those cases, we pleaded guilty before God. You know, it is important always to admit you are in the wrong. True. Especially so, when you are. Mm. The problem is, Sometimes we want to defend ourselves, even when it is very obvious that actually you are in the wrong. Mm. Let us learn to admit our wrong. Somebody say amen. 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 Ask your neighbor, do you find it easy to admit you are wrong or you must not? <laughs> you know, you, you see, we lose nothing. We have all to gain to accept our mistakes. Just like a child, when a child, you know, you ask him, hey, uh, Asante, did you do your BCD? No, that I didn't. And it's obvious. Then the kiboka is going to come out. No alternative. No alternative. In the same way, when we are children of the most high God and admit our wrong and faults, the Lord is faithful to forgive us of all our sins. And so we are presenting a case and say, Lord, we as a nation, we have sinned. Now, this was based on the fact that there was a national prayer patrol that was done in the month of December. And all over the entire region is of the country. And we found that there was enough evidence that we are into witchcraft, mm. we are immoral, mm. we are sinners, we do, uh, you know, everything, even wicked. Mm. Without God, we take responsibility of our actions. Mm. And we ask God in the same court, Lord, now judge these gods, mm. the gods of witchcraft. Mm. Yes. The gods of polygamy, Amen. the gods of idolatry, yeah. the gods of bloodshed, mm. you know, tribalism, mm. you know, all those many cases. We say, God, please judge. Yeah. And you and I are in families where things never go right. Mm. Disunity, biting, backbiting one another. There's no, you know, love for each other, genuine. Mm. There is poverty in our families, smelling poverty. I'm one of those families. You know, God is telling us, telling us in this season mm -hmm. to remember that we can present our case mm -hmm. before God and we'll win them. Amen. Let me say this. Beware that Satan worries we in any legal case against us if we have sinned and not repented of it. Mm -hmm. He worries when. Mm -hmm. There's enough sufficient uh, evidence once you found that you're a liar mm -hmm. or you're, you're cheating. 
on your spouse, or when you are, when you are, you know, doing many other things. Once they are there, not repented of. Don't you can't be in that same case. Mm. And I really believe that our unanswered prayers have got to do with something. We need to find out what is the problem with me. Mm. Let me sort it out. Mm. And earlier we admit the better for each one of us. So once we confess our sins. Satan loses the case. Mm. You always lose the case. Mm. Revelation 12, 10, which I read a while ago, he says that I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, mm. and the kingdom of our God, mm. and the power of his Christ, mm. for the accused of our brethren is cast down, mm. which accuses them before God day and night. Oh, yeah. The devil does that every day. Nine stop, day in and day out. Morning, evening, is doing the same thing, accusing and counter-choosing. He is a chooser of the brethren. Let, let us cry out to God for mercy and grace by his blood that we will find mercy in our times of need. Mm. Hebrews 9, 22 says, the need under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. May we be able to cry out to God that our sins will be forgiven. Mm. Because once they're forgiven, we are free from condemnation of the devil. Mm. Romans says, Romans 8 says that therefore there's no more condemnation yeah. unto those in Christ Jesus. Yeah. We stand free in Christ. Amen. We stand not guilty before the Lord. Yeah. So the devil is a chooser of the brethren. Now, it's so interesting, brethren, that the devil never accuses the wicked. The drunkards, he doesn't accuse them. The liars, the witches, idolaters, the murderers, he never accuses them. Never does. He never accuses those who are false prophets. He never does. All the liberals, he never. But those who love God, those who say, I'm born again, you become the devil's target. Mm. But the good news is, greater who is in you than the devil who is in the world. Amen. Amen. There are some to hide always in the blood of Jesus. And hiding there because in Christ we are safe, we are secure. Mm. Satan also is a fault finder. <laughs> you know fault finders? He always finds fault. Mm. You've done this, you've done this, and when he keeps record, I like that picture on the slides. Oh, I'm not seeing it, I'm so sorry. I mean, he is always at pointing a finger. Mm. You lied, you cheated, you misjudged, you misalter, you lied. I mean, non-stop. And he keeps records, by the way. Mm. He's a false accuser. But, let us keep our souls in the blood of Jesus. Asking him to cleanse us of unrighteousness. Asking him to cleanse us of impurity. And by that, to take away any kind of evidence the devil bring against us and against the church mm. of Jesus Christ. The devil is a liar, mm. as the Bible teaches, John 8 44. When he speaks a lie, he speaks his native language. Mm. And the Bible says the truth is not in him. Mm. But our God is a faithful God mm. and is gracious and is merciful. Mm. Let me again just some, some, something here to some of us. Are you a fault finder? It is you who is on the right side and all the others are in the wrong side. It's you who is who knows what is right and others always get it wrong. May we avoid those kind of uh, mannerisms because in a way they portray the nature of the devil incarnate. May we stand our ground and be what we ought to be. Paul warns us, Romans 2, write the verses down, please, Romans 2, verse 1 to 3. But now, therefore, have no excuses, you pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself. Hmm. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we pass judgment on someone else, we actually condemn ourselves. And the Bible teaches about that, you know, to the others, as we love them, treat, treat you as well. So they have personal judgment 
uh, you know, on someone else because you too are still in a human uh, format. May God help us to be careful, to be consistent in our walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Part number three of our sermon today, what are the conditional factors for a successful court case or prayer petition before God? Mm. What will help us to be overcomers of the petition of the devil in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ? Number one, walk blamelessly. Amen. Be pure before God at all times. How can this be attained? By continuous repentance of sin and iniquity and transgressions mm -hmm. and all faults and all failures. Mm -hmm. When we are pure before God, the devil will have nothing to bring us against king of glory, against us. So by that, when we bring a case before God, we are bound to win our cases, the Almighty King. Lamentation 3, 4 says, let us examine and probe our ways. Let us return to the Lord. This is a year to return to the Lord and be pure and be holy before God and walk like Enoch and be what we should be. Psalms 139, verses 23, 24 says, Search me, O God. The Psalms 139, 23, 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my answer thoughts. And see if there is any hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Let us pray to God this year to search our hearts. In the morning, at night, at all times. In fact, somebody was telling me the other day, Brother, don't go to sleep when you have sin. Don't sleep with sin. Mm. Don't, don't cover it in your bed mm. and make it warm. Mm. Repent before you go to bed. Amen. <laughs> don't give it a thumb of sleep with our sins, you know. Oh, you know, you cut your life. Hey, it will kill you. It will kill you. So if you go to bed, repent. Ask God to cleanse you. The other condition to make sure we win our cases is daily build a healthy relationship with God, the judge. Yeah. <laughs> when the judge is your friend, when you appear before him, there will be some concessions, not so. Come on. When the judge is your friend and you appear before him, there will be concessions. Uh, maybe you wouldn't be as tough as you would be because you have a relationship uh, with each other. Mm -hmm. Many of us have gone to offices. You're looking for something, and it, somehow it gets trouble. And somebody gets to know a friend of yours, and you're like, God, use this friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, the matter is done. Mm -hmm. Good example happened last week. Last week, two weeks after, okay, before we came here, we, we wanted to make sure we connect to Umeme. Hallelujah. At that time, Umeme, they had closed up any connections. We had no option but to have some solar. These are solar lights that are shining on. And they've been on for the last couple of months. And so, in November, a friend of ours visits us right here and says, hey, what's the problem? Like, what have no power? Like, really? And like, did you do all the due diligence? Uh, do you have all the files? Then like, everything is done in your offices. It's like, which office? I in the office where it was. Like, okay, leave it to me and my Hallelujah. family. Yeah. <laughs> now, the rest is history. Our power is connected. Mm. Now we have the option of both solar and of course in a piece. The problem with solar is that you cannot run your equipment as you are saying. But it's on. And we're going to use it for light and all that. But our sockets have got to remember on. You turn at the back, you see the thing up there. And even that those connections are here now, they're all done together to make sure you can do to uh, generate. Of course, because of our structure now, we can't do that automatically. But we're getting there soon. What was the difference? I knew the guy! Yeah. He was my friend! Yeah. He gave him my favor! Yeah. Let God be your friend this year! Yeah. Let him be your friend! Yeah. And we'll win every single case again, let's ask me for God, because he is our friend. Yeah. Jesus is our friend. Yeah. He's not our enemy. Yeah. He is our God. He's our friend. He's our friend, our capo. Mm -hmm. We talk and do rapport, as it were. So we must build a health relationship with God, just like Enoch was. Enoch worked with God, and so he should. 
Condition number three to win our cases, know your rights. Know your rights as a son of God or daughter of God. Courts of law talk about rights. Land friends, is that true? Yeah. That even the accused has rights to remain silent. That's so? all? It's a right, eh? Sharon. <laughs> the accused has got a right to remain silent. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> it's a right. <laughs> Child of God, know your rights as a child of God. Amen. You are born again. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Know who you are. Yeah. You are born again. Mm -hmm. You are a prince of God. You don't like any other big, big German that had a word on the street. You are different. Yes. Know your rights. Understand those rights as you go to courts of law. So we, as God's children, our rights. The Bible says on the cross, just was speaking, he said, it is finished. So it's a right. He paid a penalty for our sin, therefore, it is our right to claim that right Amen. to God. And John 19, 13 talks about that. It's finished. But also, Jesus suffered on the cross for you and for me, that will be redeemed from sin and iniquity and therefore we stand not guilty before God. Somebody say amen. amen. 1 Peter 3 18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness of unrighteousness, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Jesus died on our behalf. And therefore, we have a right to proclaim his mercy and his grace and his kindness. Number four, know God is law well. Are you conversant with the scriptures? Are you conversant with the law of God? Do you know the scriptures well? Because ignorance is not the face. That's what we are saying every day. Carry a Bible. Move your notebook. Learn the word of God. Be a knowledgeable student of God's scripture. Do not afford to be ignorant of scripture. Be well knowledgeable and informed at all times. Talk about holiness, the scriptures are there. Talk about prayer, you know the scriptures. Talk about, you know, generosity. We pull out the scriptures. Be knowledgeable of the law of God. So many times the devil wins his cases because you are ignorant of the law of God. You know very well that lawyers, who in cases most of the time, are well informed. They are knowledgeable. They know their thing well. Uh, we have... Uh, a gentleman who helped us at home with many things. This guy is not even educated. But the guy is knowledgeable. Door locks have got issues. This other furniture has got a problem. We don't know how he thinks. But the guy is knowledgeable. And because of that, we keep him around to work for us because he does a good job. And you know what? Even the workers will keep good people only. They're fake out of the door. Why? You lack knowledge. You, you lack what you ought to have. Well, in the, in the other side of the, I'm going to the secular world, but the other professional life of mine, I do HR. In HR, I would recommend hire good workers. If they're not good workers, there will be heavy laden for you in the organization. They become liabilities, not assets. Let them exit tomorrow. So even if God was sharp men, Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel, he looked for sharp young men who knew, able to understand, and quick to understand. May God help the church that will become brilliant and wise, intelligent and informed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of John says that if you hold my teaching, you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I mean, it's the truth you know that will set you free. Listen to this. The truth you don't know never sets you free. So do you know God is right? Do you know what you ought to do? What does God say in this month and season? That's why we keep on telling you it's a month of Tibet, it's a month of Ada, it's a month of Shishivan. Why? That you may know and be proud of the knowledge. The time you are in the season you are in. 
May the Lord help us. Look at Ezra, chapter 7. Please, the verses we write here. 7 and verse 10, the book of Ezra. The Bible says this. Man, I love this scripture. Ella, have you written this scripture? You have written it? Okay. She's my daughter, so I need to make sure she's following me. Ezra 7 and verse 10 for sake of my daughter. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and do it and teach his statutes and rules in Israel. Ezra 7 and verse 10. The man made up his mind to chew the word of God, to study the word of God, to ensure that he's on course in the scripture and the law of the mighty king of Israel. And the Bible says even to, to, to teach it out there. You see, you never teach what you don't know. You cannot teach what you don't know. You can never stand before us when you don't know what to do or to say. So we need to study God's word. And by that, the devil will never catch us. Somebody say amen. amen. He will never catch you when you know the scriptures. He knows you know. Yes. Rarely people go to people who know already. Rarely. When a thief knows that the other person is a thief, they never go to school from thieves. Not so. They know what to do. May we know what to do. And number seven, whenever you go to God with the case or the matter, go under the blood of Jesus. Whenever you go with a case before God, don't go in your personal name. Always go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and under the blood of Jesus. Mm. Those are the only acceptable get passes you need. Mm. But you heard about the voters register? Mm. Make sure you get your voters cheat as well. Mm. You heard about that? Yes. yes, get a cheat on top of your uh, national ID. Mm. But here, the name of Jesus and his blood, mm. our credentials yeah. to God. Amen. You appear with the blood here. Mm. And uh, which name? <laughs> Jesus' name. Yeah. And then the case is done. Yeah. May the Lord help us. Yeah. So we need to stand our ground and know and have all the things together. Mm. Dear saints, at this state of full moon of Tibet, a time of law and order, mm. the judge is on the seat, is awaiting to make decisions or verdict in our favor mm. because we bear the name of the Lord our God. Mm. A time of when we are crossing one Gregorian calendar 2020, 2021, let us present our cases before God. Those burdens, those concerns, those issues, those health matters, business issues, marriage cases. Come on, let's present them to God in prayer. Amen. And the Lord will help us to be with us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who will we? May the Lord help us. Mm. None of us loses any case in long. I believe that in as much as a lot is going to happen this year and the years coming, may we be on the winning side. Amen. That in the midst of chaos, When the economies were low, church giving was low, big time bad. 